Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to have a look at the hand pump. We'll look briefly at the development of the hand pump and how it came to be. We'll look at all of its main parts, how it works, and the interesting connection between the hand pump and Corona. So let's get started. Hand pumps are a type of human operated positive displacement pump. They're a common sight in many rural areas, especially where piped water connections don't exist. They've got a simple design, they're very robust, they require very little maintenance, and they're very easy to operate. This is what has led to their widespread application throughout the world. This design of pump dates back many years. The first very rough design was developed in Europe in the 1400s. Because hand pumps were installed at the center of a community, they were often installed near a church or the area where people used to gather for communal activities. For this reason, they were often called parish pumps. Another common name for this type of pump is the pitcher pump. Let's now take a look at how a hand pump works. So here is our hand pump. Let's do a little spin. I think a lot of you will recognize it. You may have seen it in rural areas. My auntie actually has one of these when she pumps water up for the horses in the stables, and that's in the UK. But irrespective of where you are in the world, you've most likely at some point seen a hand pump similar to this one here. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. We've got our suction inlet. The fluid will be drawn in through the base. We've got a base where we've got some holes. These holes allow us to pass bolts through the base and then attach the pump securely to whatever we may be mounting it to. Then we've got a cylinder. That's this long cylindrical item here. It goes from the base up to this point here. We've got our discharge pipe. That allows us to discharge the fluid. We have a top cover. And in the top cover, we've actually got a gap. And this gap allows our piston rod, that's the item that goes through the gap, to connect to the pump internals. The opposite end of the piston rod is connected to the lever or the handle. You can see that here. That's our bolt and our nut on the opposite side. And the handle or the lever comes down and we would essentially grab it here in this area and we can pull it up and press it down. What does that look like in action? Let's just press the play button. We can have a look. It goes down goes up and then down, up and then back down again. From this angle though, we can't see so much. So let's take a cross section and then we can see the internal parts of the pump. This one here is a non-return valve, also known as a check valve or a one-way valve. With reference to hand pumps, we actually refer to this valve as a foot valve because it's at the foot or the base of the pump. If we go up the cylinder, we can see our piston assembly. The piston assembly or piston consists of various parts. Let's go back to full screen mode for a moment. And then what we'll do, we'll take the cylinder away and we can have a look at the part in a bit more detail. We've actually got a ceiling arrangement or a ceiling item around the piston assembly. I'm just going to say piston from now on because it's a little bit quicker. This item here, the black grey item, is usually a piece of leather called a leather cup or a similar kind of material that's used to seal the space between the piston and the cylinder. We have a non-return valve located here. What I'll do, I'll take away some parts so we can see it. I'll take away our leather cup, take away our seat. And I'll take away our cage. And then you'll see the disc of the valve. You can see that it's quite cylindrical in shape. Looks a bit like a mushroom. If we add our seat again, you can see that it actually just sits on top of the seat. And in this position, it is closed. The item that stops our valve disc from dislocating is called a cage. We'll install it there. And the cage stops it from moving too far out of position. 
So generally, it's only going to move up and down in a linear motion. We'll see that in a moment. Let's just reset everything so we can have a look again. Take away our cylinder. You can see we've got our piston rod, which connects to our piston. Once again, we're just using a bolt and a nut. And that comes up, passes through the top cover. Notice this strange shape here where it passes through. You'll see why we need that in a moment. And then it connects onto the lever, as we saw earlier. So let's see it in operation, and then we can really understand how it works. There are several things that are going to happen now at the same time. The handle is going to move. It's going to move up this way and back down. The valve here is going to change position, and the piston is going to move down and up within the cylinder. So the piston comes down, the handle goes up, and the foot valve closes. Once again, piston going down, foot valve closed, handle going up. But what's interesting is, when we go in the opposite direction, let's now move the piston upwards. The piston moves up, the handle comes down, and the foot valve opens. Once again, piston coming up, handle going down, foot valve opening. So there's quite a lot happening at the same time. Let's ignore the handle or the lever for a moment and just zoom in and have a look at the foot valve and our piston valve. I'm going to slow the animation down. The piston's going to start at the top and move its way downwards. So the piston is now moving down. Notice that our foot valve is closing and notice that the gap here between our piston valve or the disc of our piston valve and the seat has increased. It hasn't actually increased. What's actually happened is that there is now a gap, whereas before there was no gap. This means that fluid will be able to pass up from the bottom to the top. It's gonna to come up along here. If we go back to the top, you'll see that here, the disc is pressed against the seat and the valve is closed. Let's just press play. As the piston moves down, disc comes off the seat, the valve is opened, and we get fluid flow from the bottom or the underside of the piston to the top side. At the same time, we are now closing the foot valve. Back it up. Piston is coming down, the foot valve is closing. The reason we close the foot valve is because the fluid in this space is then going to be compressed. And as it's compressed ever so slightly, it's going to just leak out and transfer to the other side of the piston. So we've now got the fluid on top of the piston. And notice the piston valve is now closed. That happens just before we start to move our piston back upwards towards the top of the cylinder. So the fluid that we have now on the top side of our piston is going to be pulled upwards. You can see that in action. It's coming up, up, up. And if we had fluid here, it would be pulled upwards and then be discharged or would move up in height. And then it would just flow out of our discharge pipe. So that's essentially all that's happening. What we're doing is controlling the flow through the pump using a series of one-way valves or check valves, non-return valves, whatever you want to call them. And that's allowing us to displace the fluid from one area to another. That is to say from the lower side of the piston to the top side of the piston. For this reason, this is a type of positive displacement pump. It can pump air, which is why I say we're pumping a fluid through the pump. I don't say water because we might need to prime the pump and that means that we need to pump air before we get the water. Both water and air are fluids, despite the fact that one is liquid, the water, and the other is made up of a series of gases, the air. So let's run through it again. We want to draw fluid into the pump. I'll find the right position for that. That's gonna occur 
as the piston reaches the lowest point of its transit. So now we're creating a negative pressure in this space here on the underside of the piston and the top of the foot valve. That's going to cause fluid to be drawn in through the suction pipe, so in through here. And as the piston moves up, the foot valve will open. So the foot valve opens, the piston's still going upwards, it's going upwards, it's going upwards. If we were a bit of water or air, then we would be traveling through this space here. Okay, so now we're inside the cylinder. And what's going to happen now is the piston is going to gradually come down. And again, if we are a fluid, we're going to be forced to the other side of the piston. Piston's coming down, we are being displaced, and we're going to move from the underside of the piston to the top side of the piston. So now we're on the top side. Piston's still going down, we can see the piston rod coming down. Still going down, still going down. It's stopping, it's reached the bottom, and now it's moving upwards. We're going to be moved up as well because the piston is pushing us upwards. There's no way for us to flow down because the piston valve is closed and the space around the piston is also sealed between the piston and the cylinder. Once we get to this height here, let me just see if I can move around this way a little bit. We get to this height and almost, let's let the piston come up a little bit more. We are now high enough to flow out of the discharge pipe. So let's go along here, go along here, along here, and then we come out of the discharge pipe. So quite a simple operation, quite a simple mechanism. If we go to our top cover again, we can see that we have this weird shaped cut on the top, and that is to allow the piston rod to move back and forth. The piston might move linearly, within the cylinder, but the piston rod and the handle does not. If we press play, you can see it's actually going once to the left, and then it's going to come back up and move to the right. Sometimes it actually moves even further across, depending upon the design of the pump. What we're doing here is using the handle or the lever to gain mechanical advantage, or to get mechanical advantage. What does that mean? Well, if we look at the handle, you can see that we grab the end of the handle here and we would pull it up or press it down. The pivot point is here. That's where we attach the handle to the top cover of the pump. The distance between the pivot point and where we grab the handle is very important because what we're actually creating is what we refer to as a moment of a force or simply a moment. What is a moment? Think of a moment as being a force applied in a circular or a radial direction. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but essentially what we want to do is apply a force to our handle, that might be a push or a pull, and we want to use that force to make the piston move up and down. To make this a bit easier, we apply the force a certain distance away from the pivot point. When we're talking about the moment, we're talking about force multiplied by distance. The force is the force that we apply as the human operator onto our pump handle. The distance is the measured distance between the pivot point and where we apply the force on the handle. So moment equals force multiplied by distance. What's interesting is, if we take a constant force and we increase the distance we actually end up with a larger resultant moment. If we reduce the distance, we end up with a smaller resultant moment. In practical terms, this means that a weaker person can operate the pump, providing that the pump handle is sufficiently long and the weaker person can gain sufficient mechanical advantage. Now this concept of M equals FD, or moment equals force times distance, is used all over the engineering world. We use it for many different parts, components, machines, across all industries. If you look at a simple ball valve, the reason we have a handle on a ball valve is to make the ball valve easier to operate. If the handle is very short, it would be difficult 
to actuate or to open and close the ball valve. If we're looking at a globe valve, for example, they have handle wheels, but again, the handle wheel is designed so that we can apply a force a certain distance away from the pivot point. If the handle wheel is larger, then we can apply less force, but it will yield a larger moment. Another really interesting fact about hand pumps, especially now in times of corona, is that the whole study of epidemiology, how viruses and bacteria spread, that whole science, the whole field behind it, has origins with a hand pump. In 1854, there was an outbreak of cholera in London. Cholera makes people sick, it's a bacteria that can be found in contaminated water, and a physician at the time, Mr. John Snow, he actually proved that the source of this cholera outbreak was the local water pump. So he removed the handle from the water pump, and within a few days, the cholera outbreak subsided. Because of John Snow's correct assumption and the methods he used to locate the cholera outbreak, he's often considered the founder of epidemiology. So the next time someone's talking about COVID or corona, you can think of the humble hand pump, which is where the study and science of epidemiology all started. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like it or share it on social media. Don't forget you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to access this 3D model, then head over to savory.com. We've got about 400 different 3D models and you can access all of them directly through a web browser and in virtual reality. If you want to learn more about engineering, then check out some of our courses. We have over 40 hours of online engineering video content available and we cover topics from combustion engines to valves to pumps to bearings, cooling towers and many other interesting topics. Thanks very much for your time.